Many of you may have seen or heard about the creative protests of some of the farmers from Tamil Nadu. They shaved half their heads, half their moustaches and rolled naked on the roads in Delhi to demand the Prime Minister's attention. They were asking for a waiver of their agriculture loans because Tamil Nadu experienced one of its worst droughts in over a hundred years. Just a few days later, the newly elected BJP government in Uttar Pradesh announced a farm loan waiver for 15 million farmers at a cost of 36,000 crores. The Tamil farmers are still protesting to their fears. Now, if the Tamil farmers realized that they are the ones that are actually helping pay for the UP farm loan waiver, wouldn't that be salt on their wounds? In a sense, it's true. The UP government can pay for its farm loan waivers only if it can borrow 36,000 crores. The state of UP's finances are so bad that it will need someone to act as a guarantor for it to borrow money. The center has to provide that guarantee. But for the center to be able to provide that guarantee, its own balance sheet must be strong. Where does the center derive its balance sheet strength from? The center gets its balance sheet strength from the collective might of the 36 states and union territories of India. Each state contributes its own share of taxes to the center's kitty. These taxes include personal income tax, corporate tax, sales tax, excise taxes, and service taxes. Isn't it then important to know how much does each state contribute as its share to the center's kitty of tax revenues? Just four states contribute as much in taxes to the center as the remaining 32 states and union territories combined. These four states are Maharashtra, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka. The average resident of Maharashtra contributes 32,000 rupees a year as taxes to the center. The average resident of Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka contribute roughly around 20,000 rupees to the center. But on the other hand, the average resident of Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, and West Bengal contribute a mere 6,000 rupees as taxes to the center every year. Once these taxes are sent to the center, the center keeps 58% for itself and divides the remaining 42% across all the states. So how much does each state get back from the center as its share of tax revenues? For every 100 rupees in taxes that the average Maharashtrian sends to the center, only 15 rupees comes back to the state of Maharashtra and the 85 rupees is kept to fund the center and other states. So in the Tamil Nadu example, for every 100 rupees that the average Tamilian sends to the center, 34 rupees comes back to the state of Tamil Nadu, whereas 66 rupees is used to fund programs in other states such as the UP farm loan waiver. So for every 100 rupees that the average resident of UP sends to the center, he gets back 200 rupees for his state and the average Bihari gets 400 rupees back. So clearly, the Maharashtrian, Gujarati, Tamilian and the Karnataka are bearing almost all of the costs of nation building. In this context, how would a Tamilian farmer who's pleading for his farm loan waiver feel when he realizes that his state is helping pay for UP's farm loan waiver? This is the big question confronting India's political economy today.